Hello viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I'm in a unique position this week in that uh, I had intended on shooting some repair video yesterday, but that didn't quite work out, so that leaves me without a video for this Monday. However, I've been requested to do this video so many times, it's not even funny. So welcome to my garage at home. Uh, and we are going to take a tour of my home toolbox. And this toolbox was actually my first toolbox. So let's, instead of looking at me, let's look at the toolbox. All right, well here it is. It's a Craftsman. This was my very first toolbox that I got upon graduation of school, mechanic school. So proud to have it. And it was the first toolbox that I used when I uh, started working as a professional technician. Next to it, you see an air compressor that my dad gave me. Um, also a uh, air tank that I've used in the past. Some artwork. Jack stands and a jack. That thing there is a heater that I use sometimes. Pry bars. Here's a crowbar. Also works as a hat rack. Um, here's my stickers. Anyway, open it up. Uh, pictures of old cars. This is my son when he was just a wee tot. He's a big boy now. Keep the sparklers up here to keep them uh, out of the kids' hands. And this toolbox actually used to be over at the shop where I started shooting my videos. And the toolbox that's at the shop used to be what I used to work out of at work. But now this thing has since moved here and honestly this garage ain't so big. Uh, so I don't I don't really do a whole lot of work here, but if I need to it's nice to know I have the tools got these nice Mac gloves um, I got some holes in them from uh, when I used them on some very hot exhaust once We'll just set those aside But most of the stuff here is craftsman um, And mainly because I could I bought this huge kit. It was like a huge tool kit that uh, allowed me to uh, buy a whole bunch of stuff. These are magnetic. This is this is my Mac set here of uh, sockets. I really like these. And this little magnetic keeper thing is, is also pretty nice. But yeah, just your standard sets of sockets and torque bits and Allen heads, bolt metric and standard stuff. Uh, this is actually an old, this is a Honda tool, believe it or not. Used to get the old Honeywell filters off, which the old Honda Honeywell filters were the best filters, in my opinion. Um, set of sockets somebody just gave me. More half inch stuff. And those of you looking for like a, a brake tool to turn in, like I showed in my rear caliper video, here's a nice cheap alternative. And when I say cheap, uh, I don't think this cost hardly anything. Um, bag of rocks. Don't ask. Anyway. That's the top of the socket. Here we have uh, one of the first of the junk drawers. I used to work in the grocery business for a while, so I have plenty of box cutters, which came in handy. A set of uh, vernier calipers that my dad actually gave me. In fact, I learned how to read this. This is, this is the first thing I learned how to read that kind of stuff on. Um, yes, syringes, I have a drug problem. Actually, my nephew has diabetes, and you never know when a syringe can come in handy for stuff. Uh, you know, the usual junk. These are circuit breakers. Good to have these. These are great when you've got a short circuit. Instead of blown fuses, you put this in there. They have different amp ratings. Um, golf tees, even though I don't play golf. Here's a uh, quote-unquote special tool from Honda that I made off a wiring harness, and all I did was loop it together. This helps you pull check engine lights on Hondas. Nice little ruler. Uh, magnetic screw starters. Tire gauges, little flashlights, more box cutters, nice little mirror, picks, spark plug gapping things. I hardly ever gap spark plugs anymore, but I like the wire type better than the uh, solid type. Um, these, I think, are for removing uh, drums. You can watch that video for that. Tire blow guns. Um, pictures, stuff, earplugs, cigars I got from when guys I worked with uh, had kids, chapstick, 
this actually somebody gave me. I have nothing to do with Hyundais, but we, there was a Hyundai dealership next to where I was. And this is uh, how long ago this was. This is a really long time ago. My PA inspection licenses. You had to have those. A few of those. Here's another one of my Acura training things that I got. Nothing too exciting. What are these? Oh, these are flints for a lighter. I used to smoke. I got over it though. Kind of glad though. It was getting way expensive. Uh, another junk drawer. You just. I picked these things up to keep. These uh, bicycle patches are garbage. Um, little things to clean stuff out, to hold stuff. Hot Wheels! Gotta have tools to work on Hot Wheels. Bet you can't guess what this is. Uh, yep, it's a pen. <laughs> Weird. This is kind of where stuff ends up. Toothbrushes are really good for, you know, some people have mentioned cleaning throttle bodies. Here's uh, an alternative to silicone paste. Um, I've used, is this a sealant or is this my silicone paste? I can't remember. I think I use this as silicone paste. Yeah. So many of you have said that you were looking for an alternative to the 3M stuff that I use. Oh, here it is. Um, oh yeah, grease needles. People have asked me about this. I tried it. Um, I, I, it, it works sometimes. I use these to put on uh, piston uh, studs when I'm putting them back down inside the bore. These help keep it away from the sides of the bore so you keep from scratching it up. Um, this I think is old carburetor parts. I think so. Yeah, I go back far enough to where I've actually worked on some carburetors. Ah, homemade tools. This one. I made as a slide hammer attachment to get the axle out of a 1948 DeSoto, the rear axle I needed to pull out. The seal was bad. This actually screwed on to the axle. It actually had sort of like a kingpin on the end of it. Kind of, sort of. I don't know if a kingpin is the right word for it, but I had to screw this on the outside and this screwed onto the uh, slide hammer. And I slide hammered that thing right out of there. It worked awesome. It did, it did. JV Weld. Useful stuff. Ah, here's another homemade tool. As you can see, my welding's not so great. But this is an oil pump drive for a Ford. And I use this to prime the engine on my Ford before I started it up. You can take the distributor out and this, this will fit down onto the drive that's already in there. And you can uh, hook it up to a drill and get oil pressure before you ever start the engine. Which is a good idea. Especially when you spend a bunch of money and time trying to build something. Ah, oh, Allen wrenches. Pipe cutters done other things besides work on cars. Sometimes plumbing, whatever. What have you. But pretty much all Allen wrenches. And the Craftsman stuff, you know what? Works just fine. I like these kind with these ends on here. It gives you a little more maneuverability. Ah, here's another. Here's my feeler gauges. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of these putting T's and cooling systems to flush them out. Feeler gauges down here. Actually, I think this is the thing that my dad gave me that I learned how to do uh, measurements on. We should we should do a video on measurements at some point. I have to refresh my memory. They've got digital things these days, so you don't really need to remember that stuff. Shell casing. Uh, what is this for? Uh, not sure what this is for. I've got one from a uh, 20 millimeter inside. Actually, from Baghdad Air Airport. Don't ask me how I got it. Um, Unibets. Uh, we use these a lot at the dealer for installing spoilers and trunks and things. It's just nice to have one thing. Inductive ammeters. Ooh. Yeah, we'll talk about those sometime. Drill bits. A knife somebody gave me. This video is going to be really stinking long. Oh, yeah. When you pull this knife out, the way it's set up is it actually opens it as you remove it from its little pouch. Battery terminal cleaners. Uh, utility blades. Measuring devices. Sandpaper. All things a growing boy needs. Oh, uh, we already saw that. We saw that. Extensions and ratchets. Once again, you'll notice 
mostly craftsman stuff. I really like this quarter inch uh, snap on though. Blow my extensions. Locking extensions are nice. In fact, some of this stuff is actually better than what I have at the shop because it's not all wore out. I really miss these Craftsman ratchets because you could work them with your hands. In fact, this is from the first set of ratchets that I had and they're all kind of worn out. But you used to be able to like turn them with your thumb. They don't make these anymore. It's a real shame. And here's my domestic uh, flare wrenches. These big thick things are great. They really are. Breaker bar. My Mac ratchet. More extensions. You know what that stuff is. Pliers, cutters, and such. Um, once again, majority of it's Craftsman. And a drawer full of wrenches with six points, no less. The kit that I got had six points in addition to some, well, at least 12 points I think are left over. But it's always, I actually don't like these. I mean, they're nice to have, to have a six point for the fasteners, but eh. Um, I had to specially modify this. I can't remember why. You know, and I hate to say it, but I love Craftsman for this because, you know, I'm, I'm keeping this tool, but these are a lot less expensive than buying your, you know, big name tool brands, what have you, and uh, doing your modifications. So I just heated this and made this into this. I think this was to get to a distributor bolt on a Chevy or something. That's what I think I did that for. So if I don't have a tool, I will make it. Now, these Craftsman Professional Series wrenches, in fact, this one here is from the wrench eye picture. Well, maybe it's not this one. It's one of the bigger ones. But yeah, this Craftsman Professional Series stuff. Here's a Blue Point gear wrench type thing that I actually find a lot of tools under hoods. I've actually found a lot of tools like that. This one is one I've also found. This little Cornwell stubby. Um, but yeah, these these Craftsman Professional Series that they've got out with their wrenches, you can just see the difference and how they look. Here's the uh, 17 or what have you. But yeah, it's just they, they feel a lot better in your hands for using them a lot of times. These things can, can be hard on your hands if you use them a lot. You, and, and I say this a lot to people who are like, oh, I'm, I'm new to the business and I'm in school and I want to buy tools. What kind of tools should I buy? Well, I say buy the best tools you can get, because you're, especially hand tools, because that's going to be the best money you spend. This stuff will last a lifetime. Got another set of these. I love these snap-on long wrenches like this. Got two of them. I got that 1719 and this 1214. If you work on Hondas, get those two wrenches. They'll be your best friends. So if you work on Hondas, 1719, 1214, there's some good advice for you. But yeah, always invest in good hand tools. Always, always, always. Screwdrivers and gasket scrapers and the first of the bottom. These things just sort of show up. I'm not really sure what this is for, but this is something else I found under the hood of a car. Along with many of these things. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm finder of lost tools for some reason. This, this is just a ratcheting screwdriver set. Not terribly exciting. But they're all the same. Once again, Craftsman Professional stuff. And it, it works good. It works real good. Uh, I think it was one of these big wrenches that I used in the wrench eye picture. But once again, there they are. Ugh. The thing about not not having roller drawers, they get heavy. Metal cutters, oil filter wrenches, vice grips. Um, you know these. I always got to have a set of these around. Uh, multi, well, what is this called? A crescent wrench, but there's another, another word for this. It's, uh, oh, I'm sure you'll tell me. Throw it into them comments. And once again, another wrench I believe I found. I already had some. Found these pliers. <sighs> stuff I find in their hoods. Ah, uh, now we're getting the electrical stuff. Hey, I've got a decent soldering iron with a nice tip on it. I do, I do. The one I used in my soldering video, not so much. And I have tried these butane things. Um, didn't have as much success with that, personally. I've also got uh, what I call these ET lights. I don't think this one has batteries in it. No, it doesn't. Oh, there we go. 
Surprise it works. This is nice for getting down into stuff and seeing what you need to see. <laughs> Magnifying glass. Kids love to take that and play with it. No, not for burning ants. They like to see things big. I used to burn ants with it. Stick pins. Um, I use them to back pro connectors. I stick them in the back of a connector um, to take some measurements. This guy here is the first DVOM that I had. And that you know, it works great. I've had this thing since I was in auto mechanic school. And it's, what's really neat about this one is that it's got uh, this temperature probe. So you can take temperatures. So like if, you're, if you suspect a catalytic converter problem, um, take its temperature at the front and the back. It should be 100 degrees hotter at the outlet than it is at the inlet. If it's not, it's not doing its job. Around 100 degrees. And this was just like a basic electrical set that I got. Wire strippers, a little test light. Um, you know this guy from soldering videos. Also just wires and alligator clips. I mean there was a time before the days of scan tools where you actually had to go out on the vehicle and like hook different things up and do your own actuating of devices. Zip ties, always a good thing to have. All the connectors, stuff if I'm doing electrical repairs. Now, you notice I've got a lot of these because I don't like using them. These things are a connection problem waiting to happen in my opinion. So I would avoid using this type of connector. But it came in the kit, so there you go. Fun stuff. Rosin core solder. The hammer drawer, yeah! Thick feeler gauges, long feeler gauges. I got these off the Snap-on truck. People often ask me, you know, where I got these. And these got off of that broken hammer. This is my Mac impact driver set. And I've had less trouble breaking the bits on these on the Honda rotor screws than I did on the Snap-on version. Not sure why that is, but it is. Now once you close. Brake tools, need those, punches, lady slipper, rubber mallet, more punches. These, this is one of those spring brake tools that, that I talked about. You can actually take the spring, hook it in here, and then you screw this down and then you can use it to take large springs off of rear brakes. They do exist out there. And I don't need to explain to you that the rest is hammers. Um, more weird stuff. This is my vacuum gauge. Hugely important. Um, digital, does it even still work? Holy cow, it still works. Digital tire pressure gauge. Um, my timing light. My other timing light. Hacksaw. And, you know, I've been told that these beam type torque wrenches, and this was my first torque wrench. I've actually torqued things with this. But I've been told that these actually stay pretty accurate. These little beam types. Stethoscope, more socket rails if I need them. <laughs> Love this flashlight. This was actually given to me as a gift by a former employer. Hey, it still works. Awesome. Cops carry these to crack you in the head with should you get out of line. Uh, all the fire you could want. More big solder. This I think is just a drawer full of stuff that people gave me. A little bit of plumbing. Yeah, there's a, uh, a clamp. I like having these clamps around. These are just welding gloves. These are pieces, the, ah, these are actually pieces to my grinder that I never installed. Their guards. Here's some flux. Set of old sockets. Oh, old socket set. Once again, something somebody just gave me. Teflon tape. More soldering paste. 
Ah, uh, yes. Honers, both big and small. Wheel cylinders for this one. Sometimes I actually did a DeSoto master cylinder with this. Didn't work out, it was too rusty on the inside. Rebuilding brake parts, especially old brake parts, doesn't always work out. This is a piston ring compressor. You're installing pistons in an engine. You need this to crank those down. Old propane torch set. I uh, can't remember what these hooks were for. A puller. And this is a neat set of pliers. Neat set of Mac pliers. I got the ones for hoses, big hoses, little ones if you're doing surgery. These are some of my favorites for doing hose clamps and such. These are spring loaded unlike my other set. They have these little springs here. Cause them to go back but hardly used. I bought this for my other shop and uh, ended up using other stuff. The last drawer power probe. Working with electricity, this is the best tool in the box, I think. Love them. Met them at the tool show, too. Great bunch of guys. Sandy discs. Other stuff. Uh, this is my... Before I had an air compressor, I was using this. I had a 12-volt version. This is actually an electric impact. Had a 12-volt version. Not so great. This one, the 18-volt. Much better. It can take some wheels off, so I mean, if you need to be somewhere and you're out in the way. These are my, this is for pulling engines. It's kind of neat, you bolt it where a carburetor would go on the intake. And you can get that in there, more propane stuff. My original air hammer. This is my original half inch impact that I used that I actually, a guy I worked with gave that to me to use. Here's the one that I used up until the guy I worked with broke it. Here's the uh, Snap-on 3 8 that I used for... Actually, is this Snap-on or Mac? I can't remember. This might have been Mac. I don't remember. But, I mean, they're all made by, like, CP and IR. They just slap their name on it. That's all they really do. And here's... Here is probably... I used this once. This is an inch-pound torque wrench. And if you do work with, like, say, transmissions, things like that, Used it once, <laughs> and it's since it was pretty expensive too, and now it sits in the bottom of this drawer. Well, I know it's uh, not a repair video, but it was a requested video uh, to see what I had in my toolbox at home. I don't do a whole lot of work in here; it's not a very big place, as you can see. I tried to pull a Civic in here once, and uh, yeah, it was tight with just that. So if I have to work on something, it's out on the out on the driveway, but mostly I take stuff to the shop. I mean, come on, I got the shop. These tools, this box at home, it's all just kind of there in case at the moment. But this this toolbox has a lot of memories for me. It, it was given to me by some very special people, like I said, at my graduation. So I'm very happy to still have it in my life. And I always will, because I love it. This is Eric the Car Guy. I hope you enjoyed my little distraction. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And then, of course, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll catch you later. Bye.